Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. As you know it, just two days away until the Penis movie arrives, which is coming out this week on November 6th. So I'm about to review a television special that came out in 2011, which it is indeed the 45th um, television special that they ever had. It's called Happiness is a Warm Blanket, Charlie Brown. And just to be aware, it is sort of misleading when it says original movie on the top. And yeah, I know the sticker label even says it, all new movie. Well, it isn't really a movie at all. I mean, this isn't, of course, the fifth installment after the theatrical films that we got. You know, like A Boy Named Charlie Brown, you know, Snoopy Come Home, Race for Your Life Charlie Brown, and Von Bias Charlie Brown Don't Come Back. You know. No, this is just a television special that they've been waiting to do for quite a while now because the last special was He's a Bully Charlie Brown that aired on ABC yep and it later came out on DVD by Warner Brothers but this is actually the first um, special that's actually released by Warner Brothers Television since they had the rights to all the peanut specials from Paramount yeah already being digitally mastered and everything they do have the special on Blu-ray as well I got this on DVD as a birthday gift that's very shiny for the slip cover yep and I'm just going to check it right here just same as usual has all the extras on the back yeah tons of great extras and there you go <laughs> does include a coupon inside which is already expired but this is what it looks like and yeah, it comes in those crappy um, Eagle Box cases, yes. Someday I'll try to replace it with a better one. But it's a great special. It's about, uh, you know, Linus and his trusty security blanket, you know, who just, you know, brings it around anytime, you know, because he's always feeling, you know, secured. And until he found out that his grandmother is going to arrive, since, you know, his grandmother hates uh, kids holding blankets. So yeah, he was afraid because it, it can only get even worse because Lucy is even planning on on actually getting rid of uh, the blanket that Linus has, which caused him to be, you know, as we know it, <laughs> really crazy. Now this is also interesting too because this is the the only special where suddenly uh, Bill Melendez and Charles M. Schultz were not involved in it. Even though they are dedicated to it, I mean, they're actually, it was just produced by Warner Premier. Yeah, which was basically you know, a company that just released mostly direct-to-video, movies, TV shows, everything. Yeah, that's what the company was. But they did air it on TV, on Fox, uh, during Thanksgiving. I even watched it then, too. I thought that was cool, since... Uh, I did first watch this one, you know, I I got the DVD, and I loved it. So, yeah, and this is also the first to be in widescreen, too. So, that's also interesting, because it's in high definition, and has everything that they really meant for. Because even though they did use the animation that's very similar to all the um, penis specials that came out in the 60s. In fact, it has that 60s quality towards it. Something I never thought I would see before, even though it's done digitally and had a lot of the stuff that they put into it. The special stars uh, Austin Lux as Linus Van Pelt, Amanda Pace as Sally Brown, Trenton Rogers as Charlie Brown and Schroeder, Shane uh, Baumel as Pigpan, Bless Bolden as Violet Gray, Clara Bravo as Patty, Andy Paseo as Sherman, Andy Bell, who happens to be the director, as Snoopy and Woodstock. Also with archive uh, footages of Otto from Bill Melendez, you know, as we know it, Snoopy and Woodstock. It's written by Craig Schultz, you know, the son of Charles M. Schultz, you know, with the help in hand 
of the comic strip that's based on you know Charles M. Schultz's work, yes, Sparky, and Stefan Passes, and it's directed by Andrew Bell and Frank or Larry. The special begins when Linus Van Pelt, who happens to be the younger brother of Lucy Van Pelt, just couldn't get enough with his uh, trusty blue security blanket. Everywhere he goes, he uses it during the summer, winter, spring, and fall, you know, especially on baseball games or any other certain day that he chooses. And of course, Charlie Brown's dog Snoopy always goes around after his blanket because you know, he wants to lean on it and yeah, and you know he always chases him around by taking his blanket, you know, and just <laughs> swinging him all the way up in the in the air and so on and so forth. Hell, he even tries to use it as as a scarf for becoming the World War One flying ace. Anyway, um, that what leads to a bigger problem when Linus is already pushing in its limits to find out that his grandmother will soon come to visit. And he's planning on getting rid of his blanket because he found out that his grandmother actually hates kids with security blankets. So just as their grandmother's arrival seemed to become very closer, the Peanuts game tries to help Linus uh, learn to cope without his fuzzy habit of his. So Lucy even tries to particularly eager to cure Linus's dependency by using his own psychiatric techniques. Yep. Even Charlie Brown tries to help him, but he doesn't have the heart to see Linus suffer. But <laughs> Snoopy is constantly agitates matters for the most because of course he does want the blanket to himself as we know it, yeah, as I mentioned already. But in the end as insightful as Linus points out is that everyone has their own type of security blanket of their own because it seems to me like Linus isn't the only one that suffers the most. Every single penis game around had their own problems. So it proves the point that life can be a little security and it could be a valuable thing for everyone to achieve no matter how everything goes. So that's what the special is all about and basically out of all Charlie Brown specials I've seen everything from the 60's to today this is the first time I've ever saw a special where I got to see lots of um, beautiful animation all done by you know Charles and Charles himself but but it was done all digitally it's not to mention it's in widescreen for the very first time in high definition I mean I know the movies were in widescreen but but this one however is the first one to do so because usually all the television specials are in standard format so they're trying to come up with something that looks exactly like how the specials were but what made it so different was that they managed to uh, make this into a 60's animated style format like all the previous specials were you know like a Charlie Brown Christmas and you know he's a he's your dog Charlie Brown it was a short summer Charlie Brown Charlie Brown's All Stars it's a great pumpkin Charlie Brown you name it all, all those specials and yes even the movie to make it look exactly like how they were I think their intention was they wanted to make it more like an early 60's style you know, long before we had characters like uh, Franklin, Peppermint Patty, Marcy, Woodstock, and all the others. So they just want to focus on the ones that came before it. Because I know they had, you know, other characters like Shermie, Patty, and Violet. Yeah. Because those were the earlier ones before we had the later ones, as we know it. But they did use them later on. But apparently, yeah, this was the attention by the son of, of the comic strip creator, you know, Greg Schultz, 
So we actually wanted to come up with an idea by using the 60s style animation. They also had um, the folks at Cookie Jar Entertainment, which um, found a Korean company to do all the animation for this wonderful special. I like the idea that they use uh, lots of uh, close-up shots, um, zoom in and zoom out. I mean, there are a lot of beautiful scenes, including shots of the TV where they were actually turning it on. You start seeing, you know, a white dot, and then it soon stretches, and and all you see is the fuzzy snow coming up, and and then it zooms all the way out. So you see the TV, and then there's other shots where you can see uh, Snoopy as the vultures by looking into his eyes up close. So we can actually see he was about to go after Linus just to take his blanket everywhere. And yeah, there was even other shots where they zoom out um, a picture of Beethoven from Stroder, and they even had um, you know Lucy actually smashing the the statue of, of Beethoven on his piano. It, it does it in slow motion, something I never thought I would see. And wow, it, it was something. It, 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 I mean, the animation was just beautiful. I mean, a lot of close-ups of of what uh, Charles M. Schultz's animation would look like, and everything they went into it, especially the scenes where, you know, where Linus was trying to dig all the way through the holes throughout the entire uh, grassy field, and yep, you got to see, you know, lots of that, and a, a lot of close-ups of of the hill where he was trying to to look for the blanket that Lucy buried. And what's also interesting about this was that this was sort of based on the phrase that the peanuts have used, which is called, happiness is a warm puppy. And it became a cultural reference. So they now use that for every single line everywhere. And they've been doing it since. Now, for a special like this, it isn't anything new, per se, because it pretty much did recycle some of the scenes even though they are from the comic strip, they all came from from all the other specials that's been done already. Like, it's an adventure, Charlie Brown, where you know Linus was already you know feeling very insecure, you know, having that particular habit. He was, you know, even without that blanket, you know, he's feeling you know, really bad that he was trying to fall asleep and he couldn't last that long. He had Charlie Brown to help too. Um, and the fact that uh, Lucy, of course, had taken the the blanket by using it as a kite, and then he, she let go, and then wants it flying all the way up into the sea. Yeah, you can actually see the animation where the blanket is actually into the sea and was washed away, as we know it. This is something I never thought I would see, and it worked. And and I know they also borrow elements from other um, specials too, like, like a Charlie Brown celebration and a Charlie Brown and Snoopy show. You have the Saturday morning TV series that came out in '83, so it did borrow those elements. Uh, so it's it's nothing new to the subject, but at the same time, I thought it worked, and I, I like the fact that they they managed to bring back everything that uh, the specials had had ever done yeah and it just looks so much better um, it looks really good in HD and this was also the um, the first special to be uh, scored by Debo's front man Mark Mutterbot yeah and he, yes as we know it because they usually scored this by other um, composers like Vince Garardi, Ed Bogus um, David uh, Binnock, but they also have other scores too, and I know even the new movie is going to get uh, Christoph Beck. So that's cool. I mean, they, this is the first one that they ever had, and it does have that quality to it. It almost felt like something that uh, Charles M. Schultz would have had done back in the 60s when he was starting to create all these other specials. And you know what? This would have been the perfect choice a long time ago. But Either way, for only 46 minutes, um, it works. And I'll give credit to uh, 
Andrew Beal, who happens to be um, the person behind uh, Pixar, because he even worked on the animation for Wall-E and all the other ones. Hard to believe. This was definitely the perfect choice for him to, um, to do a Charlie Brown special like we never saw before. And I liked it. It really worked. It, it, it was perfect. The, the way its style should really remain. You know, before they started changing years later. So, yep, I recommend Happiness is a Warm Blanket, Charlie Brown. I give that four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.